We're standing at this spring area that has a uh, huge population of watercress. Going back in history a little bit, this was my parents' dairy farm. And in the 1950s, we, it would have been terribly overgrazed and these springs were diminishing yearly. So fescue came along and this farm was converted to fescue the, through the years and the springs became drier and drier. For the last 20 years, we've been converting this watershed above this back to native plants. And uh, we've, you see an increase in the spring flow. This is the most, by far the most, of the watercress that's growing here this year. It's uh, 10 times what I ever remember before. As we've uh, converted the watershed back to native plants, you get a deeper water infiltration which enhances these springs with prolonged flow. We do water infiltration tests on different soils, different crops, different plants. Basically, when you do water infiltration on dominant fescue pastures, you will have a uh, compacted, hard, hard to infiltrate soil type, as opposed to as you get native plants, uh, different root systems, different depths, you end up with a more crumbly situation that infiltrates water a lot better. So that's what we're seeing in the, in the enhancement of this spring area is a result of converting this watershed back to native plants out of fescue. The thinking about the springs being strong, that also relates right up across the entire watershed in that we're infiltrating water and we're storing that water the ramification downstream is if it infiltrates into the soil and slowly goes down and a few days later comes out in the spring, that has slowed that down as opposed to when it runs off like a Walmart parking lot, it, uh, it's headed, headed for New Orleans. The whole thing's just part of soil health. It's, you gotta have that water go in the ground to have a functioning ecosystem.